Hello, everybody. Uh, February 8th lecture, uh, Chainsaw Operation and Safety. <clears throat> Just to kind of give you an idea, got um, past the large equipment, um, tractors, skid steer, dingo, uh, gone through the trailer aspect. Now we'll go through some of the chainsaw or the, the handheld stuff. Start with chainsaws. Um, so, first uh, lecture, I'm going to do two lectures on uh, chainsaws. First one, I was going to kind of give you a rundown of the safety stuff, uh, some of the operational aspect of, you know, the reaction of the chainsaw. Then on the 15th, um, the plan is, is that the steel representative will come in and do some other demonstrations, uh, talk to you guys about some other things about chainsaws and handheld stuff that's going to be in the classroom that'll be on campus that'll be on the 15th that week of the 15th uh, the lecture will be geared on the book uh, chainsaw safety i'll gear that towards that test in the back the quiz in the back uh, which that quiz will get you certified for chainsaw safety and operations and then that also is going to be one of your first quiz grades. So the following week after the 15th, you will actually turn that paper quiz in that's in the back of that book in on that lab day. So just trying to give you a forewarning. We'll talk about it in lab, uh, but that's kind of where we're going over the next couple weeks. Then after that, we'll go into chippers and we'll go into trees, uh, that, that aspect of it. So the, the quizzes that are related to the class are gonna start coming up here um, it'll be the first of March by the time they're due, uh, but towards the course of March uh, or the span of the month of March, uh, we'll, we'll be getting into a lot of those quizzes being due. So just forewarning you, if you want to get ahead, go ahead and start reading those books, start um, paying attention to the quizzes in the back, um, you start filling them out, however, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Uh, but I will gear the lectures towards those, uh, towards those books as well. <clears throat> There's a lot of stuff on chainsaw that we can get into um, from a lecture standpoint and a and a lab standpoint. So, uh, you know, if, I, if I'm going through some of it quick, um, I'll probably hit some of it again next week. And then obviously if, you know, it's repetitive, then it's going to be repetitive as well. Um, but it's, it's, it's good stuff to know, good stuff to pay attention to. Um, chainsaws are very dangerous equipment, um, so the more that you hear it, um, maybe the better off it, it can be too. So we'll kind of get started. <clears throat> Some of the PPE, personal protective equipment, um, showing the gentleman over here on the right. Uh, you got your eye glare, got your face shield, got your hard hat, um, and the chainsaw log cutting, if you will, um, that hard hat. Uh, safety screen, shield, um, kind of can all be one. Uh, there's another, there's a picture that'll come up that'll kind of show you that as well. Um, you have your chaps and gloves and heavy work boots. Um, all those are going to help you um, while you're out cutting, cutting trees, limbing, whatever it is that you're doing as far as the chainsaw. Potential outcomes without proper PE, PPE. Hearing damage, eye punctures, skin irritation, noise and throat irritation, nose and throat irritation, lung disease, amputations. Obviously, you know, these things can be cut off quite quickly. Um, the dust, the noise, uh, the things involved when you're cutting trees and the dust is flying sawdust, so to speak. So all that is uh, potential issues that you can have. Eye protection, you know, wear your goggles or your face shield when the chips are flying around, when there's any electrical sparks. Um, you know, sometimes if you're running a chainsaw and you, you cut through a log, you know, something might spark up in the, in the ground, whatever the case may be. You know, you can't always be in a perfect spot or, you know, you know that you're close to something when you're cutting something up. Um, so, you know, it's all, it's all potential dangers when you're doing that. Uh, chemical gases, vapors, harmful lights, um, you know, if you're in the trees um, and 
the sun's coming up or the sun's going down, the shadows and those types of things, they kind of mess with you um, when you're trying to make a tree fall or you're looming things up, whatever the case is, all those play a, um, a role in it. Um, fertilizer solutions, acids, all that's, all that's um, just in there from, from eye protection anyway. Uh, dust, swinging options, swinging objects like ropes and chains. Um, you know, you can, if you're roping a, a, a tree, you'll, you'll see it a lot to where you can put a rope in the tree um, and you pull it to a certain direction. That way you make sure it's falling where it is um, or where you want it to fall. Um, so, you know, those ropes can do things um, all the time. So just, you know, in, any of those any of those dangers or any of those pieces of equipment that you're using to cut those trees is, um, you know, potential potential eye issues. This is kind of the helmet that I was talking about. Um, does have your ear protection too. Kind of figure out that. Um, so this whole thing can be used when you're doing trees as your face shield, your ear protection, hard hat. Um, only thing you're not you're only missing here would be your goggles, and you would want to still wear your goggles your eye protection if you have this piece of equipment too um, because the dust and things that can kind of still come up underneath it uh, on the side of it whatever the case is um, still can get into your eye so even though you have that um, helmet and shield combination you still want to put your eye protection on with that safety glasses you know um, we talked about them before, I think, you know, this is the, the goofy looking pair of sunglasses. Um, as a manager, as an owner, you know, you, um, you want to make sure that uh, you, you try to find something a little more, um, what do you want to call it, in style, um, so to speak, because your guys are not going to wear this or your girls are not going to wear this, that type of thing. You know, if they look, if they look weird, they're, not, they're not, more than likely not going to use them. Um, but if they're working outside, obviously, uh, in landscape horticultural, you know, you get them the tinted ones, they look like sunglasses. Chances um, of you having a better turnout for, for people wearing your eye protection is going to be a whole lot greater. Keep it clean. Um, you know, like I said about the light, you know, as it, things get dusty um, and the sun changes and shifts while you're in the woods or out in the open, whatever the case is, those shadows um, in, the, in the dirt and the dust on your eyeglasses uh, can wreak havoc on you. So just, you know, keep them clean, pay attention, wipe them down. Um, you know, if they're old, scratched, you know, get a new pair. Those things are really not that expensive. You can get some expensive ones. Um, you know, most of the time the expensive ones don't scratch and uh, pit is is much, but you know if you're if you're not buying the expensive ones, you know they're not they're not expensive. They're not they're not a big thing. Um, they're they're easily um, cost effective to change them out and keep them clean, keep them looking right. Hard hats um, made of slow burning, water resistant, molded plastic. There's different levels of hard hats um, depending upon what kind of hard hats you need. Um, I'll say job oriented, um, but I kind of hesitate on that, right? Because you can wear, you can wear a particular hard hat. Uh, you can wear the top end hard hat at a low end job and be fine, right? But you can't wear a low end hard hat at a construction site because that's not what's going to help you um, if something falls, right? So just some things about the hard hats. Make sure the harder the, the, the outer shell resists blows and penetrates. Um, there's a shock absorbing suspension. If you've ever seen the hard hat, there's a little um, mesh thing on the inside of it. Um, it's not so it sticks up off of your head and looks goofy. It's so when something hits you on the top of your head, you have that gap in between the hard hat and your head that it, that it kind of compresses it and, and does that. That's what it's actually for. It looks goofy. There's no doubt about it, um, but there is a there is a reason behind it. Um, and obviously, you know, slow burning materials. You don't want it to catch fire. Uh, it is on your head. It can be strapped in. So if it's on your head and strapped in, uh, and it catches on fire, it could be you know very damaging if you can't get it off in time. 
so like I said, there's different levels of hard hats, um, class A, B, C. Uh, if you are on a construction site <coughs> where they are actually building a, a, a structure, um, you know, you will need um, the impact and penetration um, aspects to that, the electric, um, the electricity aspect of that as well, right? So you'll have all those on a on a on a construction site, um, but you know, like a C C grade, if we're out here cutting trees, is probably going to be fine. Uh, chances of us running into the electricity portion of it, um, not not necessarily. Um, going to happen too often. But if you were a class A hard hat doing it, it's fine too, right? So that's what I mean. Um, if you were at a construction site, uh, you need a class A hard hat um, or class B, right? So it depends on which, what, what kind of construction site, those are the, which, those are what you were going to need. Um, you can't, you, you, you can't show up with a class C hard hat um, at a construction site without any electric um, resistance to it. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of those aspects. So when you're choosing a hard hat, you need to pay attention to those those types of things. Um, to get the best, no problem. But to get the cheapest, you need to pay attention to what it what it where, where you can use it um, and what it is um, what it is meant to do, right? So if it's for impact and penetration, um, and has no electric, then it's okay if you're going to go out and cut trees, um, but not if you're going to go to a, a job site type thing uh, where they have all those involved. So you want to pay attention to your hard hat, right? I mean, make sure that it's not worn out. Make sure that it fits right. Make sure the shell isn't dented or cracked. Um, if it's if it is, then you need to get a new one, right? Um, you know, keep it clean, wash it so you can see if there's something wrong with it. Um, just because something didn't fall on your head and break the hard hat or you hit your head and break the hard hat doesn't mean when you threw it in the back of the truck it didn't crack um, or the, the person that you're working with threw it in the back of the truck and then threw it on top of or something they threw something on top of it whatever the case is it could be in the back seat as well not necessarily just in the bed of the truck um, so they can break or crack different ways so you just need to pay attention um, because if your hard hat is cracked, uh, you know, obviously something falls on you, it's not going to do what it should be doing. Um, so just, you know, keep those things in mind. So leg protection when it comes to chainsaws, chaps are the ideal thing. I got a neat little video that will kind of show you um, what the chaps are designed to do. Um, we are going to watch the video. Uh, we are not going to do that in person because... As you will see, I do not want to clean out the chainsaw once that thing hits the chaps. Um, but they are um, important when you are cutting uh, wood because it is you, you will you will you will just barely cut scrape your your leg um, and not even know it, and you'll look down and say, "Gee whiz, I just cut my pants! I can't believe I didn't cut my leg." Um, so, you know, those types of things that you just, you don't, you didn't even think you were close to your leg, um, happen when you were cutting trees, uh, especially when you're out in the woods and it's uneven surfaces, blah, 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 you know, all those play a factor in, um, you know, the safety of what we're trying to do. So where are the chaps? Um, they get hot. They are somewhat kind of heavy. I get it. Um, you know. But, I mean, they, they are going to prevent you from um, major damage um, in the case that that, that happens. So this is kind of what happens when you, if you're wearing your chaps, the chainsaw gets caught up in it, right? I mean, this is what it's looking like. So I don't want to have to do that, so we're going to watch it. Um, but you know, it's it, that's that's much better than than your leg, by all means. Um, but just as a demonstration, I'll let I'll let this guy do the demonstration and clean his saw out. Um, 
but you can understand what those what those things are. And it did not obviously go through the chat either, right? So your leg would be protected because it did not go through the chat. So important, you know, important aspects because, um, you know, it, it, it stops the chainsaw, it gunks it all up, um, but it doesn't cut through both sides. So, you know, there, those are very important um, aspects of, of, what, um, of, what, of what kind of safety measures that those things really are. So, you know, the chap inspections and replacements. Um, re replace them when the outer shell has numerous holes or cuts in it. Um, they'll get nicked up. They'll get um, they'll get cut just a little bit. Um, you know, so just you know, you want to keep them as as good as you can. You know, you don't have to replace them on 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 all those little things, but you know, you also want them to work and, and be be effective when when you need them. Um, so wood chops and sawdust are evident at the bottom of the chaps. That means things are getting in them. Um, so you just, you know, you want to replace them then. Uh, you know, any of the stitching has come through the protective pad. Um, you can clean them up. Um, I, I wouldn't wash them, right? I mean, they're just, they're just not that type of thing. So. Foot protection, if you're wearing, you know, boots out there and you're doing um, things with your with your chainsaw, uh, steel toes are important. Um, having the safety toes that are non-conductive um, prevents your feet from, you know, completing a circuit if you're out on an electric um, a job site where there's electricity, those types of things. You know, make sure you have good tread, um, you know. When you're out and you're climbing on things or whatever the case is, you know, having a decent tread, uh, a boot is is important, right? Hand protection, wearing your gloves, uh, you know, from from that you know helps you from cuts, abrasions, burns, um, any of those types of things. What I say is, is with your gloves on a chainsaw, you know, make sure they're tight. Um, you know, too loose of things on a chainsaw, um, you know, has, you, you will have the tendency to, you know, that, sh that saw may be slipping in your hand. Um, you still can have good control over the saw, but it, still you would want to make sure they're nice, they're, they're, they're decently tight. That way that saw doesn't have to shift any more than it, any more than it needs to. Um, so just things to keep in mind, meaning if it's cold out and you're putting your winter gloves on, probably not the best thing, right? You know, they're, they, they can still be somewhat, um, all that padding and whatnot with your winter gloves, just not the best type of, of, of hand protection um, when it comes to a chainsaw. So something that's, 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 that's tight, that's, that's rugged, there's different, different gloves that, that, get, that can be worn for different, um, different functions, but, but having, having the right gloves um, and then fitting properly is, is important when you're holding um, a chainsaw. Like I say, the right glove for the job, um, you know, a cotton glove with chemicals, bad choice, right? It's going to soak into the cotton, going to soak into your skin. It's not a good, a good thing. Different types of gloves, right? Metal, metal, metal mesh, Kevlar can prevent you from getting cut, sharp objects. Um, leather it helps you from wood chip, stone, moderate heat, cotton, can't, you know, it's basically for, for, for dirt, uh, splinters. Um, I don't know, you, you, you can still kind of get a splinter in a cotton glove, um, in my opinion. Vinyl rubber, that's more for, you know, your chemical. So as far as, you know, chainsaw type thing, I mean, you're looking at it a good, a good leather glove that fits properly. Um, that way there's, you know, if there's a spark, you're covered. Uh, splinters are pretty good. Wood chips, right? Um, those types of things. So you know, when we're when we're looking at gloves, I mean, the, a good leather glove is is probably a good, accurate glove for chainsaws. So obviously, noise in the workplace, communication. Um, you know, noise of 85 decibels is uh, or greater affects your hearing uh, if you work around it for more than eight hours a day. Um, next slide kind of shows you some some 
noisy workplaces, right? So just different decibels um, for what for what these things are, right? So just a tractor that's idling is 80 decibels. Um, so not 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 moving and throttled up or any of those types of things. Um, so you know chainsaws, your power tools, you know over 100 decibels. So if you're running a chainsaw multiple hours a day, you know eventually that's going to affect your hearing um, if you don't have the proper hearing um, protection on. So like I say, I, I think I've mentioned it before. You know, it's it's it might be cool now when uh, when, when you're young and uh, you know to not put your hearing protection in and go out and cut some trees or run a leaf blower or drive the truck, drive the tractor. You know, all those types of things. Um, you know, and you can hear fine, no big deal. Same thing if you're going to a concert, right, or whatever the case is. We don't we don't do that anymore with COVID, but you know, one day we might go back to that. It's all cool and fun and games now, but yeah, when you're 60 years old and you can't hear, you know, it's not so cool anymore. So, you know, just just keep it in mind. It's your whole life expectancy that you're trying to protect, um, not just the, the time now. A um, little more on hearing protection. When noise exposure cannot be controlled by either engineering controls, use the hearing protection. Um, earmuffs kind of somewhat muffle the sound as well. Um, and anything over 80 decibels is uh, where you need to use your, your hearing protection. Hearing protection devices, different, different types, um, the earmuffs, um, the earmuff portion uh, is good. Uh, they are bigger, uh, so it makes it a little more difficult to, to, to the comfort level is a little different. Um, but when you are if you think back to the um, headgear, uh, the hard hat, the shield, and the earmuffs on that whole um, headgear safety apparatus for chainsaws, you know, it's all one, you know, it's fairly comfortable. Um, you know, earmuffs when you're riding on a lawnmower or riding on a tractor, eh, not so comfortable. Um, you know, that's where some of the other ones, the soft spongy ones, the ones that compressed, uh, compress a little bit, um, you know, a little more comfortable. That being said, earbuds are not hearing protection, right? So if you, you know, putting in your earbud and put and playing your music, that's not hearing protection. Um, that just gives you something else to listen to instead of the noise, um, but it's not hearing protection. PPE training, uh, please required to use PPE must be trained to know at least the following, right? When is it necessary? What types of PPE is necessary? How to properly wear it, take it off, adjust it, the limitations of the PPE and the proper care and maintenance in the useful life and the disposal. So when you're when you're giving people or you know you're you're the manager, you're the owner, um, and you're telling these folks to wear it, you know, you, you need to explain to them, you know, when, when those glasses get stretched, um, I, I'll give you a new pair. You know, bring those old ones in, show me that they look bad, that you just didn't lose them and don't care about them. You know, I'll give you a new pair. Now, if you lost them, you know, I need to give you a new pair too, um, but don't keep losing them, those types of things. So you just need to let them understand um, that, that there is a life expectancy of them. They're, they do need to keep them in a certain working condition um, and that, uh, that they need to make you aware when they are not in that particular case. So we'll go through a couple, couple things with a um, couple pictures here, uh, kind of going into the operation aspect of it. Um, you know, this one's pretty interesting, right? What's, what's, what's wrong with it, right? Um, you know, there's some that are uh, pretty obvious. You know, obviously you 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 you're standing on a on a fence trying to cut a tree limb. Um, you know, that's not too good. Right? But he does have his chaps on, he does have his face shield on, um, he does have gloves on. Um, so, I mean, there are some good things going on, right? But, you know, th there are some other things, right? I mean, he has his face shield on, the hard hat, but he also has his hearing protection turned up, right? So it's not on his ear. Um, so, you know, there's that aspect. Um, so, you know, a couple things, right? I mean, you, you, you saw it with one hand. Um, chaps are on, not buckled, right? Um, 
sawing with one hand. You, you, you want two hands on a chainsaw. Um, it, 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 it's just common practice. You just want two hands on a chainsaw. Um, obviously him standing on there on safe footing and shoulder height, right? I mean, the more that you're up here with a piece of equipment, whether that's a weed eater, um, hedge trimmer, whatever the case is, you know, up here above your head, shoulder height, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of room for damage when, um, when you, when you're operating in that, at that level. So, you know, you just have to keep those things, keep those things in mind. You know, if this is a tree that you need to cut, um, you know, think, think about what, think about what you can do different, right? What, what can he do different, right? I mean, he can, ideally he'd go on the other side of the fence, take a ladder, get to the other side of the fence and just cut the tree down or the limb down from the other side, whatever the case is. Um, you know, that would kind of be the, op the, the best option in my opinion. Um, and if he can't, um, cut that whole tree down, you know, there's pole saws too, right? So there's an extension that you can get that has a chainsaw on the end of it. Um, so he could do that from the ground and stand far enough away from that limb to where he can, he can cut it properly. So, you know, whether it's the equipment aspect that he has um, to cut this, cut this limb properly, or if he doesn't have a different piece of equipment, then he, he needs to try to get to that at a different spot other than standing on that fence. So these are the types of these are the types of things that you need to think about when you when you're out there. Um, you know, number one, the boss says, "Hey, go cut that limb, limb it up off the fence." You know, just need to get it done. Um, you know, but then you come back and you hurt yourself. Whatever the case is, you know, you don't want to. You don't want to. Hindsight's twenty twenty, but you know, it's also a little late when it comes to a piece of equipment too, right? Something something major might have gone wrong at that particular time too. So what not to do, right? Working under a widow maker, tripping hazards under your uh, around your feet, no clear exit path, right? So. This gentleman here, right? So what is he? What is he doing? No, no PPE. He's just out there with his gator, clearing things down, right? Above his head is a very dangerous-looking tree. This one, this one here, right? I mean, it looks like it's hanging up in something else. So I mean, he's cutting that. That could fall at any point. Um, you know, you just you never know, right? I mean, it's hanging there. It, you never know. Um, you know, so it's just a, a, an unsafe. Thing. That's what they call a widow maker too. And back up a little bit. Widow maker is a tree branch that's hanging up there, um, and it's not connected to anything. It's just hanging in the trees, right? So that's eventually going to fall down on the ground at some point. You know, and and, and when is that? Uh, you just you just don't know. That's the that's the thing. Um, so you know, a clear track, a clear path to um, him tripping too, right? So if something was to come down or kick back or whatever the case is does he have a does he have a way to move to the side move out of the way uh, so he can escape that whatever danger that is right so does he have that here uh, i mean maybe if he goes back it, it, picture's kind of hard to tell you know how close that widow maker is but yeah you don't want to back up and then have that tree and hit that tree that's hanging uh, that's probably not a good idea either so you know just different different things this He's got a lot of area, you know, out here to where he can pull this stuff um, and cut it up if that's what he wants to do, right? So if he's, if he's trying to cut that stuff up over there on the side, you know, he can pull it out into the middle away from the widow maker and lot, limit, cut it up, whatever the case is at that particular stage. So there's just thinking about your, your surroundings when you, are, when you are out in the woods and you're cutting up uh, branches with a chainsaw. These types of things are important to think about, right? So, like I say, what could he have done? Move it out, move it out of the way, get it out in the middle. He has all that space around him so he can move. He can, um, he's got an exit path, whatever the case is. Obviously, now he's got his PPE on. Um, so, just, just those types of things. So, handling of a chainsaw, right? You know, you like we saw in the two pictures ago. Uh, you know, one-handed, standing on a fence post, 
not the thing, right? You want to use both hands, okay? Have both hands on the chainsaw. Your thumb needs to be wrapped around the the bar on the on the side, depending on if you're left-handed or right-handed, right? But not just not just a one-handed grip. Um, needs to be wrapped around, okay? So don't overreach. Be balanced. Have that chain to the side of you, okay? That chain. If the chain is in front of you, is there, if you're cutting directly in front of you, when it kicks back, it kicks back right at you. If it's to the side and it kicks back, it's to the side of you, right? So as, it, as you can see here, you know, it's, he's standing to the side of it. So if that chainsaw kicks back, it's going to kick back to his right side, okay? But he's got a good firm grip. He looks like he has a good stance, right? He's, he's, he's got two feet that are fairly well balanced. Um, he's not overreached, um, you know, and he's, he has his legs and his hips and his knees and they can turn and he can, he can let that saw kick back if it needs to kick back, okay? So reactive force little video here on what you're, what you're going to get uh, when, you, when you operate a chainsaw, right? So you can cut from the top of the, of the log or the tree, whatever. You can cut from the top, or you can cut down from the bottom, right? So each each different um, angle, or if you're cutting from the top or the bottom, it's gonna that 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 chainsaw is gonna react different, right? So if you do it from the top, it's gonna it's gonna react different than if you do it from the bottom, right? Because that chain is spinning and it's hitting that wood at a different spot, okay? So just because it it'll kick back to you from the top doesn't mean it's gonna kick back to you in the bottom which means if it kicks back at the bottom, right, it's kicking back into the piece of wood. That's not how it operates, right? It's going to kick down and into you. Um, so it's going to, you know, it's going to pull into you on that aspect. Um, so he'll, he'll kind of go through that a little bit. Don't stand directly behind the saw. Ensure you have a balanced stance that ensures you are not in line with the bar. Standing to the side will allow you to pull the saw past you if needed and prevent you from being in line with a potential kickback. Also ensure that your thumb is always wrapped. Keep a shoulder wide, athletic stance, and get a firm grip on the saw. As with all cuts, avoid changing the grip while the saw is being throttled. When cutting with the bottom of the bar, expect the saw to pull away from you and push back towards you when cutting with the top of the bar. Get comfortable with these forces before me. Never push the saw through the wood. Run it at high RPMs to keep it cooling correctly, but regulate how fast it cuts by controlling how fast you let gravity and the chain pull the saw through the wood. As you cut into wood with the bottom of your bar, the reactive forces of these hitting the wood will aggressively pull the saw forward and in turn will push the saw back, cutting with the top of the bar. Kickback is the most powerful reactive force you will encounter while operating chainsaw. Pulling occurs when the chain at the bottom of the bar is caught or pinched and suddenly stops. The chain pulls the saw forward. Okay, so a couple things. <clears throat> um, you can watch the video over and over again to try to get that into your mind. Um, but when, until you actually feel that um, like force, if you will, uh, you know, it, 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 to me, it, 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 it sits different. Um, you know, that's why if you have your hand on, if, it, if you're trying to do it one-handed, you know, you, you don't have something else to hold that saw down. You know, if, it's, if you have two hands, you're in a good solid position. When that thing kicks, okay, you have, you have a good solid hold of that, of that saw. So that's, that's the importance of, of being able to handle it two hands, being comfortable, being in a good spot, doesn't matter if you're in the woods or on a perfectly level um, um, surface, right? You just need to make sure that you're having that, that a good solid stance. Being able to move um, in case something happens, being able to you know, get out of the way, get that exit, exit path, whatever that case may be um, on, on that aspect, because you just, you don't have the, you don't have time to react that well, right? I mean, it's it, it, it's similar to a to a piece of equipment rolling over, whatever it is, right? You got less than a second that we've talked about before. 
So here, you know, it, it, those th the accidents, they happen quick, right? So you just need to be as, um, as mindful of that as you possibly can when you're operating these pieces of equipment. So once again, situational awareness, right? You know, am I exercising sound judgment? Am, am, I in the, am I in the right spot? You know, is there something above me to where, you know, I can just move this stuff to the side and get it out of the way and cut it up over there, a lot safer, a lot smarter, right? What is around me um, and, and, what, and what we're, where we're working um, to have that importance? Um, is my attitude influencing me to go against my better judgment, right? You know, if, if, you, if you're out and you're working in the field long enough, there's gonna be, there's gonna be different things, you know? I mean, our discussion question, you know, what, what do you do when you see somebody not wearing chaps? You know, it sounds easy, right, to just go up to the guy, you know, especially if you're the boss or he's an, you're an, he's an employee of yours, and hey, man, you got to wear your chaps, right? Um, but how do, you, how do you consistently get your employees um, and people on your team and in your, in your group to, to do that? You know, they need to understand the importance of those things, right? I mean, it's it's their judgment. Uh, you can give them chaps and supply them all those PPE, but it's against if it's against their judgment to use it, right? We need to we need to work on that. You know, how do you how do you change that that culture that um, that judgment that thought process whatever it is um, when you are when you are the boss, when you are the when you are the owner, or whatever the case may be, um, do you have all the proper PE, PPE? Um, you know, are you giving your employees all that? Are you familiar with the environment, right, and the timber type, right? You know, is some timber going to cut up easier than other uh, timber, right? I mean, you cut through a piece of dead wood, it's going to be a whole lot easier to cut through than a, than a live tree, right? A uh, live tree has a bunch of water in it, um, and you're trying to cut through some of that water um, on a saw that is uh, driven by a gear with oil, right? You know, those things are, are factors in, 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 in how those pieces of equipment are going to react and operate. And obviously watching out for your coworkers and the public when you're out and about, uh, making sure nobody's coming up to your job site. You know, if you, if you haven't worked out in the field a lot, um, you know, whether it's Susie homeowner or it's out in a um, city park, whatever the case may be, uh, on a commercial job site, people don't, people don't pay attention to what you're doing. Um, you know, their, 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 their curiosity is more um, detrimental than, than anything. You know, they don't, they don't put into effect that you're cutting a tree, there's a power line here, there's cars over here. Um, that you have cones set up, people have all their PPE on in your in your work group, and you know the next thing you know, this guy that works at this office building is going to come up. Hey, I saw that dead tree. I'm, I'm really glad. Hey, man, we're trying to cut this tree. Like, you know, I, I get it that you're trying to be friendly and nice, but you know, don't you see all the cones? Don't you see all the people here doing these things? People don't correlate that stuff. So. You know, be familiar with with your surroundings. That includes the public, people, uh, the the lay person just doesn't understand um, a lot of that when it comes to it. Uh, we talked about escape routes, exit routes, safe zones. Um, you know, all that type of terminology. Uh, you know, just just knowing your surroundings, right? A safe zone, an area where you want to clear. Uh, where you are clear from any adverse effects potentially encountered during the chainsaw operation. Um, you know, have an escape route, um, safe zones no less than 20 feet from a stump, right? So, I mean, a tree falls, it's a stump, kicks another away, um, you know, all those things are, are, are factors, so you just need to pay attention to that. So limbing safety, limbing is when the tree is on the ground and you're cutting the limbs up off of it to where you will have the rest of the log where you can, uh, it's called bucking, uh, we'll get to that, but bucking is actually logging up that actual trunk of that tree. Um, so limbing is when that tree is on the ground and you're cutting off the limbs, pulling that off so you can cut the bigger logs off of that trunk uh, as well. 
So before Lemon examined the tree um, for any overhead, ground hazards, escape routes, uh, safety zones, cutting area control, uh, and limbs under tension, right? So when that tree falls and there's limbs up here in the top of that tree and it falls, there's going to be limbs that have pressure um, on, on them that are on the ground, right? So as you're cutting those off, that tree is going to teeter-totter and be unstable at, at some point, right? So you just need to pay attention to that when you're cutting those limbs, when you're, when you're doing your limbing on that tree, right? So you can cut all the ones off, off, off the top end of it, and they're just going to fall off, right? And you can pull those out of the way, but eventually you'll get to the ones that are on the bottom of that tree, pinched in between that, the, the, the trunk and the ground, um, that you'll have to make sure that you have the proper um, exit route, making sure that you're in the safe in your safe cutting area. Um, so when that tree shifts, that that the, the trunk of that tree shifts, that you know you're 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 making the right decision on getting out of the way. <clears throat> so you know a couple things, right? I mean, he has his ear protection. Um, it's just. It, it, it's it's funny because I mean I see it where where I'm at um, um, you know where, where I work and where I've always worked or whatever the case is right I mean you have these nice nice helmet shield ear combination things but you know the guys don't ever really pull the ear protection down um, it's common you know you just you know like I say it, 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 is it cool when you're 60 when you can't hear eh, I don't know um, I don't think so but you know some other people maybe it doesn't matter. Um, but you know this this is a limbing thing right I mean all the all the limbs on the top right I mean you can cut them cut them easily enough they're gonna fall down they're not under pressure whatever the case is right but some of those limbs are fairly decent size too so you need to make sure the area around you is clear so you can move um, and you have a and you have a, a, an area to step back your exit zone whatever the case is right so it can get very um, cluttered if you will when you're when you're limbing a tree uh, so the ideal thing is is limb, limb a couple branches um, pull them out of the way so you your area is clean and you have a good stable uh, a stable footing on that aspect too um, you know in the technical aspects his thumb is not wrapped he's kind of up here with a chainsaw to where maybe on the other side of that tree he could maybe cut that a little bit better and it would be more down here um, in, a, in a better spot for him, but he's kind of reaching over um, in, a, in an up area, so probably harder to get his thumb around it just from a grip standpoint. Um, so, you know, all kinds of different things that you need to, that you need to think about. Um, you know, move the wood on the right side, limb the trees that you can on that right side, move back to the left side, whatever the case is, um, that's, that's, that's the thought process. So, you know, his, his hands are up, right? Um, he, he's got a log right behind him here. Uh, he's got a log right in front of his shin, uh, or a little branch right in front of his shin. Um, you know, it's, his, his saw is up, so if it does kick back, it's, it's closer to his face than it is down here, right? Even though he has two hands on the machine, um, you know, give yourself that, give yourself that space, uh, you know, to, to do that. You know, so these are just all things. But when you when you get into this environment out in the woods and you're working and you're trying to get this job done, you stop you your mind gets into work mode. Um, cut, cut, cut. Give me the chainsaw. Cut, 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 cut. Um, but the reality is, is that you need to make sure that you're being safe while you're doing this, because it just it doesn't take much um, for that chainsaw to to do some damage on yourself, uh, just because you didn't. You know, move that, move the log behind you, kick that branch out in front of you. Whatever the case is, you know, give yourself, give yourself that safety um, space to, to work in. So bucking, uh, like I say, bucking is the. Um, I, I kind of found this thing on on um, Wikipedia. Um, just just typing in bucking log log bucking. Um, it, it's um, it's the it's the it's the process of cutting a felled tree uh, and delimbed trees into logs, right? So basically, you do it for depending on what kind of um, what what you're going to do with that wood that's, that's that you're cutting, right? So 
Um, if you were in the in the tree business, you know, you can you could buck, you could cut those trunks into 10, 12 foot sections, take them to a sawmill, and they'll buy them from you, right? Depending on what kind of wood it is, depending on what kind of wood that that sawmill wants, and they'll they turn into lumber, whatever the case is, right? So there's there, it's that aspect of of the terminology, right? But the terminology, um, you know, I don't think I've ever told anybody to go buck a tree, right? Hey, go cut that tree up and do X with the wood, right? So now, if you were in the tree business, then yes, bucking would be a lot, a a more um, pronounced, if you would, term because more than likely you are going to uh, sell that wood to a to a sawmill. So you would want to cut it at a certain length, clean it, right? That that trunk needs to be clean, needs to be delimbed, um, no little knots left on it. Whatever the case is, needs to be needs to be flat. Um, if you've ever been driving down the road where you have a you fall on a, a tree truck, right? I mean the, that trunk is pretty clean. Um, so that's that's that aspect of of the terminology, but just not um, not necessarily a um, terminology that you're going to hear too too much in, in landscape horticultural on that aspect. But from a from an educational standpoint, that is the proper terminology um, on 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 that process. So when you're when you're bucking, what, what are some of the safe aspects? Right, these are these are similar similar things that we've talked about. Um, examine the area in the log. Um, what's the slope? What's the incline? Where's that thing at? How's it how's it pinched in here? Right? Is it going to roll? Is it going to slide? Is it bound up? Is it you know is it in the bind? Is there tension on it? Um, is the root? Uh, is there rocks? Uh, is there people around? All those all those types of things. Just know your know your surroundings when you're doing that type of thing. Um, so you know here's here's a guy he's bucking right. Um, he's getting ready to cut this log, um, you know, cut this, cut this trunk, and he's getting ready to log it up, whatever the case is. But, you know, what, what are a couple of the things, right? Um, you know, he has some overhead hazards. The overhead hazards that we, that we talk about is, I mean, he hasn't limbed it, right? I mean, he, he needs a limit. So, I mean, there's things over his head um, that could break off as he just runs into them with his shoulder. You know, whatever the case is, right? Those things can just fall on them. There's no escape route in this in this aspect. This happens a lot, especially when you're cutting trees and you're in the middle of the woods, or even just out and about, right? I mean, there's a lot of wood, a lot of branches, uh, and once you start cutting, there's a lot of debris around. You know, you need to make sure that you're cleaning that debris, that you have that escape route. Um, you know, it only takes a little bit of time for that log. Uh, for that tree trunk to shift and you need to be able to move and get out of it so it doesn't pinch you or crush you or any of that type of stuff. Thumb placement, um, you know, we talked about that in the video as well. Uh, you know, not on the top, you know, it needs to be wrapped around a good firm, good firm grip on the thumb placement. Don't stand on logs when you're doing things. Um, it's just not, it's not good footing. Um, you know, he can easily stand on the ground. I mean, I'm, it, hard to tell from the picture, but it doesn't really look like it's that tall. It looks more like it would be at his waist. It looks like it would be in a better position for him to cut that standing on the ground um, anyway. So, you know, it's just not good. Uh, once he cuts that big log, you know, it's sitting on top of another group of logs over to his far end. Um, when it falls, you know, the weight of those logs is going to shift, right? And if you're standing on it and those things shift, I mean, what are you? I mean, you're going to fall. Um, it's the it's that type of mentality, that type of awareness that you need to have when you're when you're cutting um, when you're cutting up stuff. Because I mean, you know, the reality is, is that that tree is very heavy, um, so you're not going to be able to move it. And uh, you know, if it if it crushes you, you fall. You fall on the saw, whatever the case is, all that is, all that's bad. So felling safety, felling, you know, felling is when you're trying to make the tree, cut the tree down, and it's going to fall. Um, but the, the, the proper tense of that is felling. Um, you know, so examine the work area. Um, look for overhead hazards, right? So if you're, if you're, if your tree's here, and there's a power line over here, you know, you need to, 
You don't want the tree to go on the power line, right? So you need to make sure your overhead hazards, you know, check it out, make sure it's right. Uh, examine around it. You still need an exit route. You still need to make sure you have safe footing. Uh, all those types of things. Observe the base of the tree. Right. So what are some of the felling safeties? Right. So what, what is what, what I mean, looking at looking at some of the things here. Right. I mean, um, you know, he, it looks like he's going to make it drop straight down the line. Um, but what's he I mean, he's got a chainsaw out there. Uh, he's got another tree in the way. So that tree can um, fall on the tree on the ground and bounce um, and, and roll and hit somebody. Um, you know, it can do all kinds of different things. So, you know, there's just a couple things you, you got to pay attention to, right? I mean, his, his chainsaw is not in a good um, in a good spot. That's really not how you want to stand. I mean, he's kind of standing by, pulling behind that type of thing. He's not in a good um, he's not in a good safe spot um, to drop that tree. And his area is obviously not not cleaned as well. So as a supervisor owner, you know, ensure the safety, um, provide the purpose, um, the direction and the motivation, right? Um, you know, and, and if, if you're, you know, I, I like this quote, and I kind of put it in there, right? I mean, if, if, you're not the, if you're not the supervisor and you're working in a group, right? Um, you know, your safety is your safety. Your safety is, is, is important to you. So you don't have to be in charge to say, hey, look guys, like, let's, let's clean this up before we cut any more. Right. You can be a leader. Uh, you can show that you that you have the knowledge. You just want to be safe. You're looking out for everybody um, and still getting the job done. You know, but it's it, it's not necessarily that you're the only that you have to have that title um, of boss or owner or supervisor or manager or whatever the case is in order to be safe when you're working, especially when it comes to equipment, especially when it comes to cutting trees, these types of things. You know, it, it, accidents happen real quick. Um, not a lot of time to react, and um, you know, I don't think anybody, it, nobody that I've worked for, nobody that I've worked with, um, all my experience that I've had, you know, if if somebody said, hey, let's stop, let's clean up, let's get it safe, let's put this on, let's use this PPE, nobody's ever really said, no, nah, man, you 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 you're wasting people's time. People are. You know, everybody wants to go home. Everybody has a job to do. Um, so it's just, you know, people get in work mode. They get into that. Um, they get into the grind of it, and it, and it slips your mind. So, you know, you being a leader, uh, you being somebody of knowledge, to just say, hey, slow down. Let's take a second. Um, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. And uh, you know, discussion question, right? Um, what, what, what do you do? What do you do when you see somebody not having chaps on? You know, like I say, um, it's easy, right? You know, the, the, the simple answer is, is when you tell them to put chaps on, right? But then when you're not around, how do you get them to continually do it? Um, that's that that's kind of the gist, you know? How do you get them to not necessarily wear the, not just chaps, right? It's all the other PPE that's necessary. How do you get them to become leaders? Um, to, to, to take care of themselves and, and those types of things. So, you know, just just be thoughtful in the in the process. And um, we got a little more to learn on on chainsaw stuff, and it'll be good to get out there in the lab and work with them. Um, I think that'll be fun. We'll try to do a couple little projects with the saws and um, see if we can't um, have some good sawyers out there. That's all I have for this week, and we'll see you in lab on Monday.